Greetings, greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to Edra New Vessel Amplified. My name is Claude Malpo and today we are visiting one of the creative hubs, creative ports in Zimbabwe and one of the places where amazing productions are being made. This is a place where Hollywood would definitely have to pay attention to because they are making some of the finest, some of the best film productions in Zimbabwe. And I'm talking about Neonet Pictures. Where is the recommendation? But these guys are taking over the world. Uh, Sydney, thank, thank you so much. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Great. So I'm joined yeah. by the director, Sydney. Yeah. Uh, and here I see uh, Warner 360 to be there. Yeah. Yeah. TV, media, guerrillas, yeah. oddly. Yeah. This is all under Neon Pictures. Neon Pictures, exactly. So Neon Pictures, we are a film and television production company. Uh, we are the new generation and we are ushering in the new ways of filmmaking. Uh, we want uh, people to view uh, local productions differently because uh, of late people have been thinking like uh, local productions, uh, they are way lesser than the national. Yeah, we are want to be getting to a point where our own productions, they can actually compete with uh, international productions. Just like how the music landscape has moved. Uh, in, if you get in a, in a club, it can be 50-50 or 70-30. 70 being local music being played in, in our own local clubs and playing music in the national. So also one that goes away that side. That's where the, our main film studios are going to be built. Studio lots in, in my shop. Daily. Um, did you get like professional training as a filmmaker? Like, what, what, what? What was the process? What was the journey for you? Because I remember meeting you in Nashville. Yeah. And you're making films, you're making productions, you're yeah. also working with theater. Yeah. But how has been the journey like for you? Yeah, so you just have to have uh, the utmost determination to make it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm self taught. So, whatever, wow. what I know, I had to self -taught. go. Self taught. Uh, I had to go on YouTube. YouTube, that's a very powerful tool. I also where... graduated from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I was going on YouTube learning how to frame shots, how to make a movie, how to direct, how to do everything, even editing. Uh, so everything that I've learned so far has been just from from just researching on my own. Okay, so welcome to the, uh, our offices. This is the reception area. Uh, you can see Pascal there. He's in the from MSU, banking and finance. We need to keep our things in order. Yeah. As much as we are creatives, there is a business side to it. Uh -huh. So he's an intern uh, here at Neonet. Uh -huh. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And so this whole establishment is now in pictures. It's now in pictures. This whole building is now in pictures. And how long has this been up and running? Okay, we have had the building for six months now, but the, this setup yeah. uh, is we are, we are two months in. Two months in? Yeah. Wow, this is impressive. Mm -hmm. Two months yeah. in, trying to make it so. Now I'm leading you to you are leading us to the bottom <laughs> where we hope uh, some big deals are going to be sold in here. Um, this is where we do our, uh, our meetings uh, just to make sure that uh, everything is on track. Um, and this is the move that we are launching this, this weekend this is for, for poor cars. Poor cars. Exactly. So this one is coming out this uh, Saturday, 14, the 14th of August. So this, uh, this is a township story. It's a production between Zimbabwe and Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So this is a Nigerian company. Uh, they're moving the pictures based in, in the US. Uh, so this is going to be probably the biggest uh, production in, in terms of budget-wise. Because uh, they're putting one, $1.2 million to towards, to, this towards this production. Towards production and they're coming in September. They were here to see... <laughs> Exactly. So we just had to put this as a reminder that where we came from now we have people believing what we're doing and committing uh, those figures to try to make sure that uh, the people can start to see our stories. And, and, and when you look at where you came from and now where you are, did you see yourself and like now the pictures getting to where it's at? Yes, because uh, I, I visualized what I was young. And I always saw myself uh, at the highest levels possible. I said this in life, so I saw myself here. Yeah, yeah it was going bigger. That's why we're talking about building towns and cities. <laughs> so this is Vince. 
Uh, designing, we have been designing what what this is the guy who's doing everything. Uh, he's also an editor, film editor. Uh, this is Chelsea, Chele Chele. Chelsea. Exactly. Yeah, custom designer. So right now she's actually working on the township story this film. Uh, I was telling you about uh, the Nigerians. Exactly. And we worked with her on the Neander. So the Neander that you saw, she brought the Neander to life, terms of costumes, everything. She brought, uh, she brought the audience back to 1890 with uh, costumes. Amazing, like, thank you, thank you. And, um, I see young people here. Yeah. Yeah, it's mainly. Is that deliberate? <laughs> Well, so obviously we're trying to build something big. We want people to understand where we want to go. Yeah. I think young minds they are easy to understand. If really if they're passionate, they can get the vision. So we, we, this is the kitchen. We want to put in here. But what? The fridge is empty though. <laughs> <laughs> Until we become uh, rich cousins. Uh, so we're still working progress, but these guys, this is the sound and the food in cuts. Guys, sorry. So what's happening here? Okay, so these guys are uh, okay. I'll leave this to Marcia. I'll take over. I think it's not better. All right, great, great. Uh, nice having you guys. Thanks a lot. Uh, so basically, what's going on is um, this is post production for for the film, right? Uh, audio, audio wise. So we've recorded stuff on set. So here, uh, basically, four processes are going on. We're putting in dialogue, we're editing it, yeah. right? We're doing sound design. It's not a lot of things uh, you would get um, out of the actual sound you get on set. We need to edit some things here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and we're also doing music. Yeah, yeah. just to yeah. drive the emotion. And yeah, basically, that's... And you literally produce music as well. Score and everything. Yes, yes. so this is the team. Um, so this is um, Rokuto, right? Rokuto is uh, handling um, sound uh, as far as like uh, music composition is, is, is concerned. Then here we have uh, Wellington, Nashab, uh, he's, um, he's, 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 he's handling uh, location recording. So location usually happens uh, before uh, we come here and also when we come here. There are also some sounds we get to record even in, in post-production. Yeah, so, um, yes, uh, my name is Tino, um, I've been doing, I, I, I was also on location, I'm also a supervising sound as a concept, and doing uh, dialogue editing, yeah. Oh, this is amazing, and I see my favorite rapper is Django. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Django Kid, yeah, so Django, one of the songs, uh, he gave us some cool faces in it to complement uh, the story that we're trying to tell. And so, what I also find interesting is that I see a lot of uh, faces that I'm familiar with from us. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because um, when we're starting, yeah. there's the, the guys who were there, who were trying to make films with them. So you didn't others. abandon the people that are there? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So when the levels, uh, yeah. if you're also growing, we go with the, with the people who were there who believed, even when, when there was no money to make the production. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Job there as well. Yeah. But how, how do you react when people are throwing you jokes and making fun of uh, people from Nigeria? And you guys are literally breaking new ground for the country and yeah. putting not only the country but also Africa on the map. Yeah. Well, what does that mean to you? Does that really cool mean anything to you? Yeah. Yeah, at first it got to me, you know. It, because you're trying to walk in an office, then you're trying to pitch yourself, then you say you must uh, So you always, I always don't let someone who judge you, but just saying you're from a single. So you have nothing to offer because they've been portrayed but like people who don't know anything. Yeah. But uh, I've used that. But what I realized was I, I had to look into it. So why, uh, why is my single portrayed this way? Yeah. I think uh, people are just intimidated because if you look at the top positions in most big companies or yeah. wherever. And, you always find Masimo people there. The country is named after. Yeah, Masimo is also. Yeah. 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 We intimidate people. So, <laughs> so yeah. as of now, it doesn't face me at all. Oh, uh, yeah, it's motivation. And also, that's why we are getting more of Masimo people mm -hmm. to be in the core team. 
to make this production so that they see that we are able to create productions like this, even with limited resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people, would, some people try to share this like ah, just because you've got this this person on board, yeah, that's why you're making it. But uh, with this production that we're doing right now, when yes. people watch the, the, the behind the scenes, they will see the lot of sacrifice that we've made for the production to be what it is. So people always try to believe to you, but uh, it's more important for us. Wow, great. And what's happening in this space? Okay. Work in progress as well. This is a video editing um, room, another one. Yeah. Uh, so we've got Tawema Yeah, so it's a film editor. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, even my earlier films were we like, my guy, just come, let's get films. We can, we can eat lunch together. Oh, wow. He's yeah. always been there. Now when we did Gonorrhea Show, yeah, he did Gonorrhea Show, he edited the very end of the film. Uh, now poor cousins editing it as well because I'm actually working on it right now. Yeah. So this is the editing room and um once it's finished uh, it's gonna be super impressive because we, we brought like proper international standard editing uh, equipment so yeah. it's just an uh, initial setup wow. that we have. And uh yeah. the sacrifice you, you mentioned the sacrifice yeah uh, what has gone in to create this Kind of establishment. Uh, how did you finance them? Like, how, how is this possible? Considering that, yeah. uh, when you look around the creative sector, people are saying there's no yeah. money, there's no opportunity, yeah. and people are yeah. constantly complaining. Yeah. But in the midst of such an environment, yeah. you and your team have set up such an establishment. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it depends on how a person treats their dream. Me when I went to to Hollywood yes. and we won, uh, there was money that we got. So when I came back, I heard this place was available for for, for us to to rent. Then I paid uh, like for the whole year. I took a huge chunk of that money to put it here. Even I didn't know what exactly the other money was gonna come from to start finishing it up. So. To answer your question about how we are doing it, yes. it's about the, whatever that you have, let's put it towards the dream. That's what I did. I just like we are starting, we are doing it, and some of the money they change even before we finish this. We are going towards making a feature. Yeah, poor cousins, the one we have, and I to put my car like um, we've got so many loans to do this production from relatives, you know. So like, I, I can you hold on to my car, then I'll be it's my pay off. Exactly. So these are the sacrifices you're making so that we can be here talking to you and saying we are trying to really put some up on the map in terms of film and professionalizing the whole industry. And um so, are we going outside? Yeah, we're going outside. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to think myself that yeah. All, all of this investment and the effort that you guys are putting in, um, will it pay off? Is it paying off? Is this something that you think is really worth it? Uh, people say we don't have a film industry. Yeah. You know, what's your perspective? Like for you, your faith, what is driving that faith? Uh, what's driving me at the moment is the potential. That's the, the film industry has. So far, we don't have an industry like a society mm -hmm. but uh, I see the potential because it's an attempt uh, attempt industry so that's my drive to try to sacrifice whatever we have we throw it in yes. so that later people can see like okay because we have two TV stations that are opening up yeah. uh, they, need they, they need content and if we position ourselves that when that time comes when they need content partners we are the people they think of so that's the plan. So for now, we don't we can have losses, but uh, we need to show people that now we are serious about film, and this is how this is the level we can get when we commit to doing productions. Wow, this is good. So I'll take you to the combi station. This yeah. is our new yeah. project, and then we'll draw like the okay. last uh, five minutes. We'll talk about. So we want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and also the poor cousin, but in, in detail. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a conversation. Conversation. Nice. Mm -hmm. We've been 
touring Neonet Pictures and seeing the amazing work that they are doing. Uh, and it will be said if we go without talking about some of the major productions that they have made, and we decided to do it in the combi, uh, Neander, their recent Poor Cousins, and also uh, Gunare Jong, yeah. and another production that they're working together with a Nigerian uh, film company, which he did mention. So, mm -hmm. good? Mm -hmm. ah, okay, cool. Sydney, um, yeah. Gunare Jo yeah. is possibly the film that put you on the spotlight. Yeah. That was a major production. Yes. Um, can you just take us through the process? Like, what informed the creation of Gunare Jo? Okay. So, it was back in 2013, I was in Mexico. I had just done my first major feature film. So someone uh, came to me and said I should do something on poaching. I think uh, at the time uh, there was a media media report about um, elephants that were massacred in Mwangi, like hundred mm -hmm. elephants that were killed using cyanide. Mm -hmm. So I started researching more into it. Then I realized like it's this big dark world, and as a filmmaker, I I felt like I should. Uh, do something about it because the people who are mostly affected by poaching are the people who get into the game parks but not the big guys on yeah, top. Yeah. So I grew up in the rural areas and uh, if someone had approached me back then and said that I just go in that game park and get uh, me a rhino horn I'll give you $500 I probably would have done it mm -hmm. but then not knowing uh, the consequences of getting in a game park because uh, it's a shoot to kill policy so I was like mm -hmm. oh okay let me just raise awareness so that's why I did I uh, came up with the story for Gunare Jo uh, with the main character being the poacher. Wow. Mm. And the film propelled you to not only local stardom yeah. but also international. Yeah. You went to Hollywood with that yes. film yes. and you ultimately won yeah. uh, an award with the prize money from there. Yeah. Um, is there something that you saw coming when uh, you were done with the production? Yeah. So yeah, as I said, when we, like I I dream so so big. Uh, when I'm actually writing, I can break from writing and practice my Oscar speech. Wow. That's yeah. how big I dream. So when we show when we're doing it after every check, uh, we say, "Is this Oscar <laughs> worthy?" <laughs> then we would agree with everyone like it's Oscar worthy. Then we would continue. So I always saw myself. Uh, at that level so even when i go to hollywood but now the experience of being there mm -hmm. it's like it's a dream like we're talking about this the whole that's the whole sign yes. you know this is the whole book of fame uh but from just dreaming and just doing it so and how was the experience being there in hollywood i was telling eddie because i went with eight and follow and yes. tendai yes. i felt at home like it so sometimes i i'm struggling myself like when i'm trying to think like should i Settle in Zim or go to Hollywood because when I was there, yeah. I felt like this is where I belong. But also back here now, we are trying to create this whole new movement for Africa. People should not be taking their attention to Africa. So when I was there, it was just like a roller coaster of uh, events. But then I was just felt comfortable. I was like I've been here like ten years, but wow. it, was just it, it opened doors for you. It did. It did. That's how I met the producer for the next film that we're doing, titled The Township Story, yeah. uh, that uh, I wrote last year during uh, the lockdown. I was in Australia. Yes. Uh, you know, it was a tough time for everyone. So I was like, okay, what can I do with this uh, lockdown situation? So I started writing um, the, the Township Story the script. Yeah. Uh, then I pitched it to him. Yeah, I wanted to do it for 40000 Yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm looking for 40000 yeah. Even before I pitched it to him, there's some people I try to to get on board. Yeah. But, you know, film. No one really believes in film right now in Zim. So, yeah. fortunately, because he saw Gunnar Show in LA, yeah. he was like, "You." Because I told him how he came up with Gunnar Show. He was like, mm -hmm. "If you you manage to do Gunnar Show with it with this certain amount of money, mm -hmm. I'm sure if you're given it." What was the budget for Gunnar Show? It was ten thousand. Ten thousand US dollars. Ten thousand US dollars to make it wow. and finish it, but then was yeah I'm talking about the money that went into like mm -hmm. uh, day to day expenses. Yeah. But then after it, so because no one was paid during production. Then yeah. after we had to now call people, then making them sign contracts. So uh, in total, I think it went to like forty thousand. Wow. Yeah, estimated forty thousand. So most of the money went towards paying the casting crew yeah. and also marketing. 
than the money that went into actually making the production and getting the equipment that we wanted. We shot it on a Lumix. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this camera that's shooting us right now. That's, yeah, because we had to work with what we had. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But you, mm. you, from then you didn't stop. Uh, you kept yeah. like you did Neanda. Yeah. Take us through Neanda. Uh, ZBC yeah. flighted the film. Yeah. And for me, I saw that as a huge endorsement from yeah. state owned media. Yeah. Was to yeah. actually the main broadcaster is about yeah. appreciating the work that you're doing. Yeah. When we were doing the film, we pitched the idea for to do a Neander film mm -hmm. because it came after there's a statue that was supposed to be put up, the first yeah, version of the, the statue, and it went online and people were starting to create started creating memes and yeah, all that. Yeah. So even people politicized the Neander name mm -hmm. and uh I researched again because also I was like part of those people like okay so Neanda why now? Yeah, so yeah. when I did my research I realized uh, she's a very very important figure mm -hmm. for us to be really, uh, what she sacrificed as a woman as well back then. I was like okay let's let's make a film to shed light on who she really was and maybe hopefully we can make people understand and not just say the name in vain just because uh, mm -hmm. she's the, she, she existed before any political party and what she stood for was for the people and I felt like now is the time also to tell a story, to use my talent to tell a story so people can judge after yeah. watching yeah. and knowing what I really went through back then. And do you feel Zimbabwean stories are being told enough? Uh, do you feel the world out there really know the Zimbabwean stories? They don't. Because our stories are being told by media publications uh, who have their own agendas. Yeah, yeah. So whatever they want to sell, uh, they will sell it to Americans and those, those, they, they will see Zimbabwe as a, as a, certain, a certain type of country that they want them to see. Uh, I had a conversation with the Nigerian camp, they are the one who's investing in, in Township Story. Yeah. He was like, I didn't know Zimbabweans are this friendly, I didn't know so Zimbabwe, we can, yeah. it's so free. Uh, but because of what's reported whenever they talk about Zimbabwe yeah. is that then when it comes to, f to the film side oh, mm -hmm. if we had enough funding and support yeah. I think we would uh, paint a better picture about our own country if uh, we have so many players coming together to say let's tell our Zimbabwe story this way because the reason why you can watch an American film yeah. even they are fighting it's a whole film and they're fighting the Asians who, who support the Americans mm -hmm. is because it's how they are portraying themselves to be heroes. And mm -hmm. everyone wants to go to America, but also everyone is struggling in America. There are people who are struggling as yeah. well in America, yeah. but they don't get to see it. So it's also our responsibility now mm -hmm. to start telling our stories where we can show the other better side of, um, of Zimbabwe. Yeah, film film definitely has. It's a, that's the tool that has been used by other countries for us to view them that way so film definitely has that role because it's a story it's you add fiction you add emotions everything if, if it comes together then you can sell whatever you want to sell because it's entertaining and it's also educational so that's where film comes to play and it has a big, big role in zoom great in africa yes. Before we end, um, if you had a chance to speak to the corporate NGO government, like all stakeholders mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe, and even yeah. the people, mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to them in terms of what you desire to see the film industry become? What I would say, I'll look straight into the camera, mm -hmm. what I would say is um, they should realize the potential. Film it's got so much potential media it's got so much potential so if we get the backing we can both benefit because if we make our films uh if they're corporates their products can be part of our films if it is product placements and uh, when our productions go out there uh, we are both uh, selling ourselves in positive light so supporting film is the way to go and uh i will feel very sorry for those we are seeing film as something that they like, ah, let them do because in the next 10 years it will be a power force in Zimbabwe and you'd want to jump on this uh, train right now as we're starting to head out.